Today we're going to talk about Weka and AWS versus Amazon FSx for Luster, specifically comparing their metadata performance and navigating the namespace with the ls command. As you can see here, we've built a Weka cluster using six Amazon EC2 instances, specifically the i3 EN 2x larges. And we have one client here that we'll be using to mount both the Weka and Amazon FSx for Luster file systems. Now let's copy the public IP of our client and SSH into it so we can run our comparative tests. Here I'll quickly show the kernel for posterity and so I know which Luster bits that I need to install. Now let's fetch the required repos necessary for mounting the FSx for Luster file system. We see here that we only have the local mount path where Weka is mounted. Let's go ahead and create a mount path which we'll use when mounting the Luster file system. Now let's mount our FSx for Luster file system. As you can see from our FSx webpage, we have a 14.4 tebabyte Luster file system, which is capable of 1000 megabytes per second of throughput per tebabyte. Like our Weka deployment and client, Luster is also deployed in US East 1A. Now that both Weka and Luster are mounted to our client, let's go ahead and list the mounts so we can see each of them side by side. We see here Weka is mounted to our local MNT Weka path, mount type Weka FS. And here Luster is mounted to MNT FSXL, mount type Luster. Now let's take a closer look at the composition of our Luster environment. I'll run this command here to see how many metadata servers and how many object storage targets I have in the deployment. You see here that we have one metadata server and 12 object storage targets. Now this is important to understand when we run metadata intensive operations against our Luster file system. Now you'll see me run a handful of commands that Amazon recommends to achieve optimal results when executing IO against the Luster file system. We'll speed this part up, but I wanted to show you these steps because Weka doesn't require anything like this to achieve optimal results. Now that we're done mounting both file systems and we've applied the best practices for the Luster file system, let's launch tmux so that we can run a couple of commands side by side and you can see both Weka and Luster return the results in the same window. We'll navigate to mnt slash Weka in the top pane at mnt slash fsxl in the bottom pane. Let's synchronize panes so that we know we're running the commands at the exact same time. You'll see that each file system has two root directories, one which has 1 million files in it, and the other which has 10 million files in it. What we're going to simply do is run a pretty basic ls-l command which enumerates the inodes in a specified directory, and we'll time the results so that we can document the differences between WekaFS and Luster. And here we see that Weka is the first to return results from the ls command, enumerating 1 million files in 31.276 seconds. And here we see the ls return results on the Luster file system after 1 minute, 9 seconds, almost 10 seconds. So Weka is approximately twice as fast when listing 1 million files. We might assume that this will hold true for the 10 million file directory as well, but we'll go ahead and run the ls-l command again, this time against the 10 million file directory to be certain. Now, we'll go ahead and speed up this video because it's going to take a little bit longer to enumerate 10 million files. Now you can see here that the ls-l command completed in 5 minutes and 43 seconds against the WekaFS file system. Now we'll wait for the command to complete against the Luster file system. Alright, so we can see that the ls-l command took 28 minutes and 16 seconds, nearly 6 times longer to execute against the Luster file system 
than it took to run against Weka. So you can actually draw from this that the wider and messier that your final systems get, the wider the gap becomes between Weka and Luster when navigating your file system with with commands like ls-l. Thanks for watching.